You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Hey, all right, bellenders. I've got Scottish oak cakes here for you. And because of the lack of any notable competition, these are probably the best thing to ever come out of Scotland, I would say. After all, the Scottish are the lowest of the low. That's what my mate Mark says anyway. So let's start with 225 grams of porridge oats here, aye sir. And add 60 grams of whole wheat flour to that, aye sir, whole wheat flour. And next go in with 30 grams, that's about two tablespoons of parmesan cheese, a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking soda, along with a half a teaspoon of sugar. And now we want to give that a good stir up to mix all those dry ingredients together. And with all these whole grains in these Scottish oak cakes, they're definitely not lacking in moral fibre. And it might be quite difficult to mix this up properly. So pick your bowl up and give it a good tossing off. Shake it all about a bit. And now that's all taken care of. I've got 90 grams of butter out of the fridge. And I've melted it. And I'm going to add that now. Apparently a Scotsman invented the fridge. But it's just a big box with ice in it, isn't it? So, I mean, I could have probably done that myself. And I've gone in now with 150 millilitres of boiling hot water straight out of the kettle. And so you don't burn your mitts doing this, you want to bring this all together with a spoon first. And it'll gradually begin to come together into one homogenous mixture. And as it begins to come together, just sort of press it down with your spoon and flatten it out. And as you stir it around, that boiling water will cool and the mix will be cool enough to handle now. So put your spoon to one side and you can use that later on to cook up a shot maybe. And now you can get your hands in there and give this mix a good old knead and that'll bring it together properly now. And you don't need to do this for too long, just do it until the mixture comes together properly. But if your mix is a little dry at this point, add a touch more water. And you can see now, when I give this a little squeeze, that there isn't too much cracking going on. And that's when you know that you've absolutely nailed the door for these Scottish oak cakes. And you can give yourselves a gold star and then get on with rolling it out. And oh look, there's a little bit of the mix clamouring for independence there. No chance. Get back in there with the rest of them and know your place. So I'm going to get my mix over here and roll it out now. Oh, Jesus Christ, who put all these books here? Oh, well, that must be doing a run to the charity shop. Or maybe she's just got back from there with all this nonsense. What's all this garbage here? Irving Welsh? Who's he? For God's sake. Can you move all this, babe? Say something, babe. Fucking say something. A book about glue? Terry Lawson. What a boring name. But he's not a very interesting character. Sex Lives of the Siamese Twins. Looks like our lass has been on the Fifty Shades of Grey again. The Blade Artist, A Decent Ride. Book about taxis. Reheated Cabbage. Yeah, that's about the extent of her cooking ability. If you like school, you'll love work. Maribu Stalk Nightmares. Don't even know what that is. Doesn't make any sense. Irving Welsh is a Scottish author, it says there. Ah, oh, well, that explains it. There'll be nothing funny or interesting here then, and definitely no exploration of the human experience. Bound to be absolutely rubbish, all of this. But I've got to crack on with this recipe for you, haven't I? Wish I hadn't bothered now. Oh, all right then, so let's get some baking paper in here, and uh, we'll see if we can get this done amongst all this filth here, eh? So yeah, just get your baking paper in as best as you can on your work surface. It is easier to roll it out on a piece of baking paper, like. And I'm going to flour my baking paper generously with some more whole wheat flour here to stop this mix from sticking. So bring your mix in now and flatten it down and then sort of shape it around the edges with your hands to bring it together. And if you do it that way, it won't crack so much on the edges when you roll it out. And as you can see, I'm just sort of pushing it with the palm of my hand around the edges to bring it in a little bit. And that's beginning to look absolutely ship shape and tickety boo now. So now we're almost ready to roll it, but first we're going to dust the top of it with some more whole wheat flour. And now we can start to roll it out. So get your rolling pin in. And then you want to roll it out about five millimeters thick, just like a biscuit mix. Same rules apply. They'll rise a little bit in the oven and they want to be sort of a thick biscuit, really. And while you're here, if you don't think anything interesting comes out of Scotland either, and you think the Scottish are all toothless simpletons, definitely don't subscribe to this channel. Go and see if any Tories have got a cooking and baking channel and subscribe to that one, eh? So yeah, as you can see, I'm just continuing to roll this out now and um, 
turn your door every now and again to make sure that you roll this out as evenly as possible. And you can check the thickness of it as you go with your hand. If you put your hand on top, you'll be able to tell where it's a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. And if you notice while you're rolling this out that it's not moving, your mix is not moving, that's a sure sign that it's sticking, so just watch out for that. Oh, and it's a right mid in here now. I better clear all this out of the way because I need to get these oat cakes cut out now and get cracking on. So I'm just going to move my rolled out mix to the side here and I'm going to get a standard oven tray in here now. And uh, I should have had a proper tidy around really before I started to do this. Anyway, I'm using a five centimetre cutter here, but you can make these as big or as small as you like to cut these out. And then just cut them out in the traditional ways if you were cutting out biscuits. It's, uh, it's pretty simple stuff like, isn't it? And while we're on the Scottish theme, Oh, I've been having more dreams about Nicola Sturgeon. I don't know why she haunts my dreams. I've just got, I've just got an insane crush on her. So if anybody's watching this who knows Nicola, just let her know, you know what I mean? Maybe we can get together and uh, maybe I can take her out, treat her right. Shag her senseless? No, man, true love, true love. So that's what your Scottish oak cakes should look like before they go in the oven. So cut out the rest of them. And any leftover mix can be um, rolled up and rolled out and cut out again. And all these here in this mix will fit quite snugly on a standard oven tray. And when you're ready, you want to get them in a preheated oven and penny cook them for 25 minutes at 160 degrees fan setting. And when they're done, they should be slightly golden around the edges and a deep golden colour underneath. And I'm just checking them here for doneness now, if doneness is even a word. And yeah, they look pretty good to me, but I'm going to put them back in my turned off oven now for about another 10 minutes to dry out a little bit and crisp up a touch. And they won't be crunchy like a shortbread biscuit, these. They should have a light crunch when you bite into them, and then they'll be soft inside, and they smell absolutely amazing, these do like. So now they've crisped up a little bit, put them on a grid to cool down fully before knocking them into your neck, and these look absolutely gorgy. And there's a nice close-up for all you cat boys and cat girls so you can see what they should look like when they're done and dusted. So in conclusion, choose serving these up on a plate. Choose a knife. Choose butter. Choose cheddar cheese on top with a hand block in the camera. Choose to take a bite out of it. Choose to put it back down for the final shot. Choose Scottish oak cakes. And you definitely should give this recipe a go. And try some of my other recipes too, because as a good friend of mine once said to me, it's the spice of life. Cheers for stopping by, my little jonties and jinties, and I'll see you again soon, eh? Tara.